Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, formerly the Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Um, This is actually the first evening show we've done, so this is a first for us. Um, But uh, we will... We will uh, we will survive. <laughs> uh, so let me uh, uh, introduce you to our panel before we get going. It is uh, February second, and up in our upper left hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And in our upper right hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom. It looks a little more like a napping <laughs> eagle of freedom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, looking like he's flying right now. He really is. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. this is what happens when you invade my home, and and uh, it's it's a very you know it's not the biggest home, and it doesn't have a private little desk area that I get to stay in, you know, when I do stuff like this. So it's like, okay, I'm, I'm in bed and this is my pillow. So there you have it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's Tim Everett for you. And he is an, yeah. uh, a pilot in the state of California and don't look too sleepy, Tim, because, uh, uh, you know, our first, uh, our first story, uh, by the way, too, my name is Jason McPhee and I'll be your host, but our first story is going to be about Cuomo putting people in old folks' homes when they're sick and, and <laughs> spreading COVID. And so we don't want you to get grabbed by him and <laughs> thrown That's into right. a home. Oh, my so God. Don't, don't look groggy or anything. Yeah, <laughs> they right. come by yeah. and grab you. Yeah. <laughs> no mistakes. No mistakes, no. Uh, okay. Well, well yeah. our, our first story uh, tonight that we're talking about it has to do with some of the fallout that's happening right now in New York. You know, we... We we're kind of gaslit by the media for almost a whole year about what a wonderful job uh, Governor Cuomo was doing. Of course, maybe some of that gaslighting was due to the fact that his brother is on CNN, which yes. you know we've, we've we've all come to expect such a high standard from them in in, in real news. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, but we've heard such a what a great job he's been doing the whole time, and and finally the Attorney General's come out over there and said, hey. Uh, you guys have been kind of playing with the numbers and, um, you know, you guys have been calling deaths uh, uh, from these uh, old folks homes, hospital deaths, I believe. Uh, he was actually yes. moving the people out. So he was forcing people in who were sick so they could spread it among a uh, uh, at-risk population. And then as they were about to die, he was shipping them out so they wouldn't die in the old folks <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's really Jeez. kind of a tragic story, but... But it's just, it, it almost sounds like some kind of a Keystone Cops type of thing going on there in New York. Uh, you guys have any any thoughts on this? I'm just okay, wondering I'm why. Go ahead, good. Uh, okay, I was, I was just wondering how a governor can have that much uh, power over over these things. You know, I mean, he, sh- he shouldn't be able to put people anywhere or take them away you know, after they're or just before they die or whatever. I mean, I, I, it's just so bizarre. This this whole thing has just been like living in some new dystopian universe that never existed in my entire time on the planet, and uh, it's just uh, just bizarre. Anyway, go ahead, Leon. What do you think? You know, talking about tragedy, um, I don't know if you guys know who um, who Janice Janice Dean is. She's a meteorologist on um, on Fox News. Both her in laws were among the people who died in nursing homes as a result of this mess in New York City. It's a real tragic story when you think about it. But, you know, the Cuomo name is golden in New York because um, Andrew Cuomo's father was also the governor some time ago, and he was a popular governor, well-known in democratic circles and well-known outside democratic circles. But this man, this Andrew Cuomo, he's so self-absorbed and arrogant that he could put these people at risk, end up about 12,000 people in nursing home dying, the highest in the country. Yet the media have been applauding this man about his great leadership. If this is great leadership, then God forbid, I don't want to see what bad leadership looks like. But the thing Mm. about this story that I find so interesting, and I think no one is covering it, but I'm telling you, mark my word, it's coming. 
Letitia James, who is the Attorney General, is a Democrat. I don't think Democrats usually sell each other down the river. But she's doing this for a reason. And the reason is she knows that one day she wants to seek the governor's office. There's no doubt about that. She already have won a statewide office. The Attorney General in New York is elected statewide. She wants the governor's office. So she have to knock down that Como name a little bit. And that is why she's putting this thing, even though the report is fine, it is true, as best as we can tell. But she need to taint that name, that Como name, so one day she could run for governor. And that's what all this is about. If this was not her intention, I bet you should have find some way to smooth the waters on this issue. But it's not going to be smooth mm. because she wants the governor office one day. Which, so is, Leon, which wow. is horrible. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So, Leon, you don't think that, uh, that uh, Chris Fredo Cuomo over at uh, CNN has done enough to taint the name? <laughs> or, or that Cuomo, with his own actions and begging people to come back to the state and telling them he'll buy them lunch or, or dinner or whatever, <laughs> they'll come back, he'll, he'll treat them out to dinner? <laughs> well, <laughs> in, a sense, in a sense, you're right. In a sense, you're right. I mean, Chris... You know, Chris was the one who told us that he, he didn't know where it said that um, protests have to be visible, you know. But um, but I don't think when it, coming out of the pandemic, I mean, let, let's face it, Andrew Cuomo was looking really good coming out of the pandemic. As much as I know it was all a facade, it was a lie prompted by CNN and MSNBC. I knew all that. But his name was... They're in good standing. It is a good Cuomo name was there in good standing. But Leticia know that she got to taint that name and paint it bad. And she did. That's what she did. I don't, I don't believe that this woman did this out of some old sense of justice. I wish she did, quite frankly, because there's a lot of issues there that need to be covered as a sense of justice. I don't think she did that for that reason. Okay? Even though she did a good thing, but her, her intent is not good. <clears throat> Okay. Well, I wish I had more to add, but I, I really don't. It sounds like Leon has been following that issue a little more deeply than I have. I try, but I'm not more deeply than you, but I try. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, you know, speaking of other disasters and, and high risk, I guess, uh, um, <clears throat> another story that I think is kind of interesting, uh, and um, I, I'll refer our viewers to um, – uh, yeah, a, a podcaster called Viva Fry. He's an attorney in uh, in Canada, and he comes out with what he calls uh, legal vlogs, where he talks about cases that are going on. And this one uh, I, I thought was very interesting because the the particular case he's talking about has to do with what what's the culpability <laughs> or the stake of insurance companies for stores, businesses that are shut down during COVID. Um, you know, are 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 they at all? Um, you know, going to be liable. This was one of the things I was concerned about at the beginning of this whole pandemic is, is this uh, essentially brazen disregard for property rights by government and, and shutting businesses down and who was going to be left holding the bag in the end of all this. And um, I guess uh, in, in a lot of cases, businesses or, or insurance companies will have all kinds of clauses, I guess, in order to get out of these things. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, an act of God or something else. But, you know, even though they may have things like an act of God, they don't have always in there an act of government. <laughs> in this case, I don't think any of them thought the government would be coming along and just shutting businesses down for, you know, six, yes. eight, 10 months, whatever. Man, um, maybe how about wars and insurrections? You know, the government's warring against the, the you know, private private companies, essentially, you know? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's funny because this is one of the first times we've had uh, an instance like this. Apparently, one of the things he said is uh, one of the things they regularly put in is that they get uh, indemnity or whatever, something like that from uh, if there's a pandemic, you know, so right. they don't have to worry about it. But yes. in this case, it's not actually the pandemic. People aren't just not going because they're afraid of getting sick. They're mm -hmm. going literally, or they're not going because the government's literally said they can't be open. And they're, so they're saying then uh, apparently a judge in at least one case may have opened the dam on this and saying that, 
well, look, it's not the pandemic, it's the government's actions. And this is actually something I've been kind of, I've tried to be careful about the language with this from the beginning. Because a lot of, if you listen to a lot of the mainstream media and others, they want to say, look at what COVID has done to us. But in reality, it's not really COVID, it's the government. The government right. has told us that we have to shut down sure. in this ill-advised um, strategy that we've been locked in on. Um, so, but, you know, if if it can happen, if, if literally, if, if, this is something that maybe a lot of insurance companies may be at risk for. Will they have to pick up the tab for trillions of dollars here? I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I don't think it's trillions of dollars, first of all, but uh, it's it's in the billions and hundreds of billions. And uh, so, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> God, it's a... I'm I, I'm not really sleepy, and I I don't want to be sent away to Cuomo land, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to defer to Leon again on this. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, I think I think this this um this is a very interesting case, and I and I and I do like I do like the outcome of the case because for one thing, government is becoming too much in our lives. Okay, I know the pandemic was real. And I know people were dying from the pandemic, but people die for other things in our society also. Okay, we have talked about this many times. Locking down the economy was not the right answer. Maybe we could have set up some rules. Maybe we need a mask. Maybe we need a <clears throat> social distancing. Maybe we need to have more hygiene when we come in the house. You wash our hands. You know, take off our clothes. Do whatever we think is necessary to ward off the pandemic, to ward off the virus. That was fine. All of that was fine. But then you turn around and you take these draconian action. You shut down the economy, you shut down the schools, and there's no science behind these things. Every year we lose 30 to 50,000 people because of the common flu. Nobody shuts down the economy because of it. Somebody may have to stay home or miss work for a little while. People may even lose their job at times because of it. But nobody has shut down our whole economy because of it. So what was the science that led them to shut down the economy because of a virus where we know 99.9% .9 of the people are going to recover from it, even if they get the virus, okay? In my own family, my son got the virus, my brother got the virus, and so far both of them doing just fine. But, but, the government had to show its power. They had to show how much <coughs> hold they have on us. These bureaucrats who are there, night in, day in, day out, running our lives, destroying our civil liberties, they had to show it. So I think now someone should pay for this, okay? Now I know it's gonna mean the insurance company is probably gonna left holding the bag because while these, this particular insurance policy talked about microorganisms, which would be, um, would, which would have covered if it was ruled that there was a COVID that caused it, it does not cover actions of government, especially arbitrary actions of government. Which, which it was in this case. <laughs> so I like what's going to happen here. And this guy raised a very interesting issue. So if the insurance companies end up on the hook, now they're going to start screaming to the government, the same government that destroyed our, our, is destroying our liberties, they're going to start screaming at them, and then they're, going to find, then they're going to find religion. Oh, we really need to open, <coughs> reopen the economy, you know? Because our friends, they won't tell us this part, our friends are in trouble. Now they'll open the economy. Now they'll find religion. Now they'll find some sense. Now they'll figure out, oh, you know, maybe our our actions were not as 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 as, um, as necessary as we thought. But this is what is going to happen here if this thing go along. If this ruling stands and it starts to spread to other states and other and other cases, this is what's going to happen. The economy will be open because they find religion. That's what's going to happen. Screaming Eagle, do you have, or Napping Eagle, do you have any, uh, <laughs> do you have any thoughts on this? <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, I wish I did have something, you know, that was sub substantive, but it's, uh, but all I have is, uh, gosh, I, I just want to wait and see what happens now, um, now that this has come up. Uh, you know, if, if legally, according to insurance law, they're on the hook, then, uh, 
I'm sure they're going to come begging to the federal government to bail them out with more money that the government prints up out of thin air, like everybody is doing. Everybody's got their hands out. Uh, right. So, um, yeah. So I don't. I don't know. It, it it's, remains to be seen, I guess, as to to what's going to happen. And uh, it's it's all craziness. You bring up an interesting point, though, that they may have to go hand in hat to the government, which in, you know, it, it's, it's kind of terrible, the messaging here, because it makes it look like the government is solving a problem caused by the market. When in reality, this is a problem caused by the government. Yes. Um, you know, in insurance companies, they serve as, as much as people like to um, use them as a whipping boy. The uh, insurance companies serve an important purpose in society. I mean, one, they, they actually do the function of pricing risk, which nobody else does in mm -hmm. society. And so they're yeah. actually sitting there, uh, you know, giving us the signals of when we're doing something that's risky and, Hey, don't build there. Cause that's, uh, that's dangerous. Don't, don't leave your car there. Cause that's dangerous. <laughs> you know, don't, don't yes. let that person drive because it's dangerous. <laughs> you know, these are all things that the insurance companies do and they're sending a price signal on risk. So it's, it, you know, yeah. It's kind of sad, but it's also too that it, they are a voluntary way that we help each other. I mean, essentially, they mm -hmm. are pooling that risk so that when somebody's house burns down, we're all contributing. All of us who are in that policy, anyways, we're all uh, mm -hmm. are with that policy uh, company. We're all essentially helping that person to rebuild, you know. And so the idea that somehow that insurance companies are just the scoundrels that need to be, you know. Uh, I, I guess victimized, which I'm, I'm kind of worried. That's maybe what's going to happen here. It's like, well, who cares? It's just the insurance companies <laughs> yeah. and government, you yeah. know, will use them as a stepping stone. So, but, you, you know, you know, during the, um, the day I had candidate, um, when they wanted to impose Obamacare on the rest of us, even though I, I, I was exempt from that, so was Jason. Even though we were exempt from it, but there are a lot of people who got, got caught up in it. One of the things that the Democrats did and did quite successfully, quite frankly, if you could call it success, was they demonized the insurance companies, people who did give who provide healthcare insurance. And this this demonization have been continuing. Everybody now see insurance companies as or oh, at the devil, the devil in a, in, in in a in, in a in a Gucci suit. That's what they see them as. That these people are just there to to scrape the backs of, of little people to enrich themselves. When in truth and in fact, as you rightfully said, Jason, they manage risk. Do you think I want to be without health insurance right now? Seriously? Do you think I want my home to be without uh, without um, home insurance if God forbid something should happen? But these people mm -hmm. manage risk, and this is a great thing for our society. But these idiots on the left especially cannot see that. And this is a real problem. But there's another subsidiary issue, side issue that is related here that is not um, that I don't think this Thing, um, this topic intended to cover, but I think it's it's related. There's also the issue of business liability on these things. So, for instance, if I went to Costco, which I which I have done quite a lot during the pandemic, uh, actually I was in Costco um, on Monday, yesterday. If I went to Costco and God forbid I contract the virus, if I got sick or my wife gets sick, could I sue Costco for causing my my wife's illness or my my own illness? Uh, this is an issue, a potential issue, I think, that is coming down here. Because at some point in time, some one of these ambulance chasing lawyers is going to figure out that, you know what, there's some liability here for business. Now, I don't think there should be. But I could see where some lawsuits are going to come out of this, where businesses may be liable for any infections that could be traced to their operations which will be an, another interesting thing for us to deal with. I know Mitch McConnell have talked about immune and um, getting, giving some kind of immunity to businesses who stayed open during, during the pandemic. I don't, know, I, I, I don't think there's any action that's been taken by Congress on this in, uh, at the federal level or any, any state level. But it's, it's an exposure. It's a potential exposure, just like the exposure for insurance companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Speaking of exposure for this uh, next uh, for this next little story, um, I want to share a picture with the audience. So um, 
Let's see. I, I think the picture should be coming through. Now. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Are we um, going to, is this a nude picture of, of anybody? Because you mentioned exposure. Uh, speaking of exposure, I'm going to show well, you a picture. Exposure, the, the left oh, would have us believe oh. potentially to racism. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. And yeah, so this is a picture of uh, Jen Saki. I was getting the, all uh, excited nude. there. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, Tim, I hope Tammy's not here in your conversation. Okay? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. All right. Well, I'm in my bedroom. What can I say? You know. <laughs> Damn. Uh, this is the last time we do a show from the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe, maybe if it goes well, we'll keep doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> depends on viewership, right? Yeah, this depends on. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, but let me, let me let me jump back into the the topic. So, in this particular thing, we were told by the uh, left frantically last year that uh, uh, that uh, racism was everywhere, and one of the places we had to watch for was secret gestures from uh, people in the know, I guess. And and yeah. so here's the uh, Biden's new. Uh, White House press secretary <laughs> from the podium giving one of those apparently secret gestures. <laughs> See, apparently known as the the uh, uh, white supremacy symbol, I guess. And, uh, you know, yeah. so, oh, I always thought it was the OK symbol, but apparently they're so sly that they have signals that nobody knows when they're expressing their hatred. I <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, but if you will recall, as, as, as funny as this seems, I mean, uh, the, this was something that uh, during the Kavanaugh hearings and other points, too, they were pointing to people on the conservative side. And, you know, this never came up prior to Trump. Yeah. You know, yeah. we never heard about these secret sig signals that you could yeah. just tell somebody was a racist. But uh, when when Kavanaugh, as all the terrible things they tried to say about Kavanaugh, they even <laughs> tried to say he was a racist because he had people who were supporting him who apparently were giving secret, you know, uh, white supremacy hand signals out there. So uh, anyways, I it seems like a stupid thing. But, you know, here the Biden administration is, you know, kind of doing it and and I, Biden appears to be a okay with it. So, <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a okay, exactly. Yeah, a -okay. If you're gonna have a, if you're gonna accuse people of a secret symbols, you you should make sure that the symbols you're accusing them of uh, are very common in uh, society and have been common for for centuries. You know the uh, the a okay <laughs> sign and yeah. so, some similar signs that, that we could think of anyway yeah it's just great um yeah how how could you how could you go wrong i mean you know who's who's to say what's going on in their minds if they have an itch they're scratching or if they're trying to make a particularly emphatic point or whatever who, who could tell who could say no one and so you, you can't lose if that's what you're going to do uh, and boy, you got to be digging deep if that's what you need to come up with to uh, yes. to discover the racism that's supposedly rampant everywhere you look. Under yes. under every rock, under every rock. And, yes, yeah, under every rock. And, and of course, I I've I have uh, totally changed over to uh, knowing now that we do have systemic racism in in this country because we have it in the minimum wage. And uh, yes. what was that law about the um, that you Davis, always remember the name Davis Bacon Act? Yeah, that act that that forced uh, people to join unions, and of course the blacks were all left out of it, and so it, it destroyed a lot of businesses that were that were coming up that uh, yes. would have uh, been successful black-owned businesses, but because of these kinds of um, it, it, these kinds of laws that are systemic racist laws from government. That's where the systemic racism comes exactly. from. Exactly. And I defy anyone to show me systemic racism that comes from just private individuals that are just holding an entire race down all by their little old lonesome with their yeah, little tell me this thing. Tell me this thing. stuff. Yes, tell me this thing. Yeah. And one thing that about this systemic racism that people never talk about, okay? They never talk, okay, fine. Let us accept the fact. I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. 
let us not take the fact there is systemic racism. Let's just say that for the let's just say for the sake of argument. But you know, the system is the bureaucracy that we're living under. And that bureaucracy is almost 70% Democrat. Okay? So if there's systemic racism, fine, I will agree with you. But it's the Democrats doing it. Yeah, it is odd that a lot of this uh, <laughs> systemic racism happens in places where there's a black mayor, a black chief of police. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like Chicago and, and, and Baltimore and these places. Well, that's the sound of our knucklehead noise patrol where we're getting near the end of our show. And Tim, I guess we have to drag this one back into the bedroom because we're trying to find, you know, we're, we usually end these shows with something si silly that some politician has said. And, and apparently the Trump insurrection is inspiring lefty erections. <laughs> oh. oh, that's right. Yeah, so apparently uh, Chuck Schumer and Anderson Cooper couldn't contain themselves recently on television and both had these Freudian slips, uh, you know, about the erections that were going on with them. <laughs> when talking about Trump's insurrection. So just to give you a quick uh, rundown on them, Anderson Cooper said, but just two weeks ago, he did incite an erection on the Capitol. So uh, I guess we know where that erection was with Anderson Cooper. <laughs> and uh, as far as Schumer goes, he said, but make no mistake, there will be a trial. And when the trial ends, senators will have to decide if they believe Donald J. Donald Don Trump incited the erection, insurrection against the United States. <laughs> 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 yeah, he corrected himself there at least. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> well, I don't know. Uh, I guess um, I don't know. as a as a man, I'm I, I don't ever want to incite erections personally. <laughs> I, I just don't. I don't imagine um, you'd want to incite erections with Schumer and Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. And uh, and and I I don't know that I necessarily would enjoy inciting an insurrection either. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think you can win either way. But uh, so go ahead, Leon. What do you think? No, I was just gonna say. You know, it just goes to show. You know, now that they got now that they got Trump, you know, through the election, and then this stupidness with, with the um with the rioting on the Capitol. You know, these people who are having some orgasms. You know, that's what they're having because of because of they finally got Trump. Oh God, it feels so good. It's better than sex. That's what was going on there. <laughs> well, certainly we, we can say that the, the this whole TDS thing has really been a hard on for Democrats that they've had for Trump. <laughs> 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 certainly had a hard it on sure for has. Trump. <laughs> yes. But uh, anyway, now, what are they going to we talk about now? Yeah, yeah, really, Trump, really. They no, they're just not going to be so excited. They're still going to have to figure something out, but we have to wrap up because we're about at the end of our time. Uh, but thanks so much, everybody, for joining us for the late night edition <laughs> of the Knuckleheads of Liberty. <laughs> Hope you'll join us for the next one. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>